A vital step in being able to develop and check solutions to simple problems is learning how to develop and express algorithms. In this video, we're going to take a look at what exactly is meant by the term algorithm and how you can start to come up with algorithms to help you solve and test simple problems. So the term algorithm often throws uh, students into a bit of a panic. And it's just because it's a term they've probably not come across before outside of computer science. But it means nothing more than a set of instructions that can be followed to perform a task. For example, uh, I follow a very similar algorithm or set of tasks every morning after my alarm goes off in order to get to work. My algorithm for getting ready and going to work consists of getting out of bed, having a shower and cleaning my teeth, then putting my suit on for work. If the weather was nice, I will walk to work. If it is cold, I may wear a coat. If it is raining, I may choose to drive and take the car. These are simply sets of steps with conditions and checks in order which can be followed. And by applying this algorithm, I can perform a task. The situation is exactly the same for when you're developing an algorithm to solve a problem in computer science. A typical first step to writing an algorithm may be to look at your problem and start breaking it down. Consider, does your problem have different levels to it and can it be broken down into two or three main sections? Can any of these sections be broken down any further? Keep going until your problem has been broken down into as many sub-problems as you think are needed. Each of these low-level boxes should end up really being a single task that performs a single operation and can't be broken down any further. Now this approach of top-down modular design is something we're going to cover in more detail in a later video. But it's an excellent first step in tackling a problem before you start to write and construct your algorithm. Once you've broken down a problem and you've really thought about it, there are several ways you could write out an algorithm. You could simply write a list of bulleted steps in English. Another common way is to produce flowcharts that outline in a diagrammatical way the steps of the problem and the logic of the problem you want to solve. Or you could construct and write what is known in computer science as pseudocode. Now we're going to have a look at both flowcharts and pseudocodes next as a way of writing down and expressing algorithms. In all of these situations, what you're trying to do is express your problem in the form of the basic programming constructs that are available in all languages. That's the idea of doing something in sequence, in other words, one statement after another, performing a branch based on some kind of condition or performing some action or task again and again and again either a set number of times or again based on the evaluation of a condition and you can express these programming constructs easily in both flow diagrams and pseudocode. The shapes we use in computer science when uh, outlining flow diagrams are no different to the standard shapes that you'll be used to in, say, design technology or maths or science. So here's a simple algorithm in the form of a flow diagram, which is representing uh, withdrawing cash from a cash machine. So we start here. Um, the program starts by asking the user of the cash machine to input their card number, um, and in the input their PIN. The computer then checks if the PIN is correct. If the PIN is correct, um, we proceed down. If not, it outputs wrong PIN and returns here. Assuming the PIN is correct, it asks them how much cash they want to withdraw. If they don't have enough funds, it outputs sorry. If they do have enough funds, it dispenses the cash 
and updates their balance. Now, this is an incredibly simplistic flow diagram, and obviously the realistic situation is more, diff uh, is more complex than this. You know, we wouldn't have, for example, uh, this hanging off here with nowhere to go. Um, if they hadn't entered the pin uh, correctly, there would probably be an additional check here to see how many times they'd entered the pin incorrectly. Uh, if it was maybe the third time, it may um, consume their card uh, and report it um, as a potential uh, error. But you've got the idea here that you're starting to outline the logic of the algorithm, of the program that you want to produce in a flow diagram. Now, moving from a flow diagram to pseudocode is very easy. But just before we do that, what is pseudocode? So pseudocode is just another method you can use to describe an algorithm. This time, though, it uses texts instead of a diagram. You can think of pseudocode as a simplified form of program code. And indeed, the prefix pseudo means false or not genuine. So it's false or not genuine code. Pseudocode basically allows you to write down the logic of a problem in an almost real like code way. But you don't have to get bogged down in remembering the strict rules and the syntax of one particular language. A question often asked by students is what are the rules for writing pseudocode? Well, the very essence of the fact that pseudocode is not real code means there isn't a set of international standard rules for it. However, there are some generic principles that most people apply, and you'll see in exam papers. The idea is that you're describing each step to the algorithm as briefly as possible. Try and use uppercase letters for keywords in the language, like inputting or printing. Use lowercase letters uh, when you're referring to parts of the language that are close to the English language. And if you use keywords to show the beginning or the end of a block of code, or parts of a loop, or code that's inside a selection statement, then indent the code so you can see it belongs to part of that construct. Let's look at an example for you. So here's our flow diagram from earlier, and here you can see we've turned it into pseudocode. We've got the start and the end, here and here, and you can map each step, input card number, input, card number. The input being in capitals, could that was actually translate to some syntactically correct uh, command word in a particular language. Then we have this loop and we can see the loop here and inside the loop we are inputting the pin and checking if it's correct and if it's not correct outputting and here that is input pin. If pin is wrong output error. Keep going until pin is correct. And you can see it's been a very easy process to take this flow diagram and convert it into pseudocode. Now both of these are algorithms and they are both ways of solving this problem. One represented as a flow diagram and one represented in pseudocode. In the exam, if you're asked to write an algorithm, it's perfectly acceptable to write it in a textual form as pseudocode or draw it out as a flow diagram. Do whatever you feel more comfortable in. But read the question, because the question may say, write an algorithm in pseudocode, in which case they would expect you to write it out like this in a textual way and not as a flow diagram. But they are both considered algorithms. Don't forget, an algorithm is nothing more than a set of steps that shows you how to solve a problem.